those house lights if they're not on, guys. Appreciate that. Well, if you have your Bible today, I want to uh, do something a little different today uh, and not have communion in the beginning. It's not that I forgot, uh, but I decided to have it at the end today because I do want to minister to some people that uh, need healing in your physical body today. How many of you are here that say, I need a healing? I need God to do something in my physical body. All right, many of you. Um, so what we want to do today is minister a little bit. I'm not going to preach long. And I love what uh, Ed was just sharing because that's right in line with exactly what I want to talk to you about this morning, getting under the anointing. And I want you to open up to Acts chapter 10, Acts chapter 10. And we're going to read a familiar portion of scripture that we could quote very easily, but I want you to look at it in your Bible. And uh, I just want to exhort you a little bit and then just minister and lay hands on those of you that are sick. And then we're going to come to the communion table and really seal uh, what God wants to do in our lives today. And I do want to tell you, communion is something that while we celebrate it uh, on the first Sunday of every month, it's something that you can do every single day if that's what you desire. And as you take that bread and the juice, you're reminded of the covenant that was made through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and all the pain that he went through in order to make you whole. And really that covenant is something uh, you know, that we need to really understand and we really need to teach more about. I think they're teaching on the blood covenant in the Bible school coming up. But I found out a long time ago that every time God makes a covenant with someone, uh, there is a cutting. Yeah, that's not my message today. Some of you got that, some of you didn't. But everything that God makes a covenant with, he cuts. So sometimes when you make a covenant with God, you're going to get some type of cut where you're going to feel some pain, but that pain is for the purpose of making you greater, not making you less. And uh, I wish I could preach on that today, but you'll have to go to the Bible school. Sign up, see Pastor Ed after the service today or one of the representatives there, and you can be a part. I'm sure they're going to touch on that in the blood covenant, and that's a great teaching because uh, we really need to understand that covenants were cut in order for us to partake of what God has. You have an absolute right to be healed. It's not something you have to beg God for, or you, something you have to uh, fast and pray for for 40 days and 40 nights. Healing is the children's bread, and it's something that is ours. And I want us to look at this uh, very familiar portion of Scripture in Acts 10, verse number 38. And I want to talk to you and show you the difference a little bit about the humanity of Jesus versus the deity of Jesus, because it's important that you understand while Jesus walked this earth, and Jesus ministered for three and a half years in his earthly ministry, that not one day of his ministry or his existence did he operate as God. And that's very, very important in the scope of our Christian faith because Jesus emptied himself, and you can read about the kenosis of Christ in Philippians chapter 2, where he emptied himself of all of his godly attributes and he operated solely as a man. So when we say the name Jesus, we're saying Jehovah, who is our salvation. When we say the word Christ, we're saying the anointed one and his anointing. That's why uh, the Messiah is even called the anointed one. They, Israel is still waiting for the Messiah, but he has already come. And many of God's Jewish people have come to the revelation of the truth that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. So when we talk about his humanity, we have to understand that that is what relates us to him in the sense that if Jesus operated solely as a man upon the earth and did the works that he did, that should encourage me as a man or woman in this room that I have power just as Jesus had power to do certain things in the earth that really uh, differentiates me from a Christian and those that are of a religious folk. Because religion basically denies the power but has a form of godliness. Christianity understands that there's resurrection power because of the raising of Jesus Christ. And we now know that the same spirit that raised Christ up from the dead dwells in this mortal body and it quickens it and makes it alive. So the power that you need is right inside you as a believer. 
The power or anointing that you're looking for is inside you as a believer. It's not off in the sweet by and by somewhere. It's not going to float down from heaven someday. It is already residing on the inside of you, and that's why you have an unction, which is the anointing that abides in you. That's why you don't really need a teacher in the sense because the Holy Spirit will teach you all things that Jesus has spoken. So in Acts 10, 38, it says this. It says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. I want you to notice that Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit and with power. And I want you to realize and recognize that if God anointed Jesus from Nazareth, he can anoint John from Elizabeth, New Jersey. He can anoint you. And what he has anointed you with, matter of fact, if the truth be told, you are already anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power. Because everyone that believes that has received the Holy Spirit into their lives have been anointed the same way as Jesus has been anointed. But we allow the enemy to deceive us, to make us think that there's some uh, difference between Jesus' anointing and the anointing that's on our lives. And I'm here to encourage you tonight, today to get under the anointing that's already on you because it will change your life, it will transcend your life, and it will impact and affect someone else's life. The anointing, believe it or not, is not for me. The anointing on Jesus was not for him to have a good Holy Ghost service so that he could feel a few chill bumps and roll on the floor and dance and shout. While we get excited because we are emotional people, the sign of the anointing is not an emotion. You can be emotional and there be no anointing. I watched a crowd of people, probably 50,000 people, that were anointed during a Manny Pacquiao fight last week, and by, last night. And by the way, he got robbed last night. People were emotional, they were shouting. But that didn't make them anointed. But anointed people can be emotional. So just having emotion doesn't signify anointing, but you can have a form of, of emotionalism along with it, but that's not our focus. So God anointed him with the Holy Ghost and with power, and then Jesus recognized because he was anointed, he was going to go and do something with that anointing. See, the anointing on our lives, when we hold it to ourselves, nothing happens. But the moment that I decide to release the anointing that's in me and I decide to release what God has graced me with, there is a power that begins to move and operate in other people's lives. So basically he was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power and then he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. So we have to understand that sickness, disease, oppression, fear, all of these things are not a love token from our Heavenly Father. But sickness and disease and oppression are love tokens from the kingdom of darkness. And he wants to make the whole sick. See, I'm not trying to be the sick to become healed. I'm the healthy that the enemy is trying to inflict with sickness so that I can be labored down and burdened down so I can't fulfill my godly assignments. Jesus went about and he was healing all that were sick and oppressed of the devil, for God was with him because there was an anointing upon him. An anointing means to smear in or to rub in. It literally means he was the anointed one and his anointing. Now, the anointing is always present because the anointing dwells on the inside of us. If the anointed one lives in me, then the anointing is always present. So you can't relate the anointing to a feeling and that's what we've done at first church and in our religious upbringing is we've related the anointing well I didn't feel the anointing so I guess that service wasn't anointed no the anointing doesn't have a feeling the anointing is the Holy Spirit who is here and his power that is here that is resident on the inside of us that believe and upon those of us that are baptized in the Holy Spirit and power but I want you to know that it is up to us completely to make a demand upon that anointing that's on us. 
that anointing will not spread like oil on people's lives unless we make a demand upon that anointing. And if you read the Bible correctly, a lot of people were around Jesus a lot of times, and a lot of people didn't receive anything from him because they did not recognize, respect, reverence, or make a demand upon that anointing. When Jesus was teaching with the doctors of the law that were sitting by, the Bible says the power of the Lord was present to heal them. The power of God is always available to heal the sick all the time. But none of them received anything because they didn't make a demand upon the anointing that was available. And the only person that received was the man that was let down through the roof, down into the building. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, take up your bed and walk, and the man was instantly healed. He made a demand upon that anointing that was available, and I'm telling you, you can make a demand upon the anointing inside of you every single moment of every single day if you need it. The woman with the issue of blood made a demand on the anointing. She said, if I can but touch the hem of his garment, I know I shall be made whole. She kept on saying it over and over again. If I can but touch the hem of his garment, I know I shall be made whole. Why was she saying that? Because she tried everything she knew how to do to get well, and she just kept getting worse. There's nothing more frustrating than going to doctor after doctor, taking medication after medication, surgery from surgery, different treatments from treatments, and nothing gets better. That is frustrating for people. But I'm telling you, when you get at the end of that place and you understand that sometimes there is only one answer and his name is Jesus Christ and the anointing that flows can heal you and deliver you, you'll get sick and tired of being sick and tired. And you'll get up from that place and you'll begin to make a demand on that anointing that's on the inside of you. You'll begin to tap into something that's already there. Because God's ultimate purpose was not for there just to be a few miracle workers in the earth. His purpose was that all of us that believe were to do the things that Jesus has done and to understand that we have been anointed just like Jesus was anointed. Isaiah 10.27 says this, It shall come to pass in that day that his burden will be taken away from your shoulder. Anybody have a burden today? I wonder if anybody's carrying a burden today that they need Jesus to take away. And his yoke from your neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing oil. Because of the anointing, the anointing is the only thing that can break the yoke and remove the burden. The anointing is the only thing in your life that can break yokes and remove burdens. And I came to tell you today that you are anointed with oil and you are anointed with the Holy Spirit today to break yokes and remove burdens in your own lives. So we have to understand, if we have this anointing available to us, why aren't we in divine expectation? Why is the church uh, not in divine expectation? Why is the church, uh, you know, wishing they would get well and hoping that they would find a cure and wishing this would happen and that would happen? Why aren't we in divine expectation? I can tell you why. Because we don't have the revelation and our minds renewed to the fact that healing is something that Jesus has already provided for us in the atonement and we have a right to it every single day of our lives. You have a right to walk in divine health. My Bible tells me in 3 John 2 that, beloved, I wish or I pray above all things that thou may prosper and be in health even as your soul is prospering. So your soul is that part of you that reasons, the, the way that you think in your mind. You have to get it prospering in the sense that it has to be renewed to the things of God. Turn back to Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. So God anointed Jesus the man, and he anoints us men and women today. He anoints us with the same person of the Holy Spirit and power. When Jesus was baptized in the River Jordan, they noticed that they saw a body descending like a dove. It wasn't a dove descending. It was a bodily form descending. And that bodily form that was descending upon Jesus was the third person of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit himself. And from that moment when Jesus had the Holy Spirit come upon him is when he began his earthly ministry. 
while he was studying in the temple at the age of 12 and studying different things from the word of God and the Torah, Jesus never, we read about a miracle that he did until he was first endued with power from on high when the Holy Spirit came upon him. So this anointing enables us as believers to break strongholds, to tear down yokes and burdens, and to really enforce the destruction of Satan's kingdom being destroyed and pummeled by the blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Colossians that Jesus made a show of Satan openly and he triumphed over him in it, which means that he won the victory. So you know what? Today, we should be excited in this room because we have the victory right now. We have the victory. We already won. We already won the battle because Jesus went before us to make sure that the battle and the victory was sealed. And now I'm supposed to rejoice and just walk in divine victory every single day of my life. So if Jesus went everywhere, did good, and healed and troubled the devil, why aren't we doing that? Why aren't we troubling him on every side? I want you to say this. I want you to say, I am anointed to do good. I am anointed to heal the sick. And I am anointed to, def- to I am anointed, say it because it's going to be long, to seal the defeat of Satan. Now, do you believe that? Amen. Well, let's look at this in Luke chapter 4. Very familiar again. Jesus is in the temple. It's on the Sabbath day. They deliver to him a book. And on that day, they just so happen by chance to, open, to read Isaiah 61. No. Everything that God does is orchestrated so divinely and so precisely. Your steps, the Bible says, are ordered and directed of the Lord, and you delight in, your, in his way. He opens up that book, and he says, The Spirit of the Lord is is upon me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. In other words, when you recognize and realize that the Spirit of the Lord is upon you, you are going to begin to think differently about your life. You're going to begin to do things differently. You're going to begin to act differently. You're going to begin to move differently in the earth. Because when you understand the Spirit of the Lord, I want you to catch the power of that. The Spirit of the Lord, the third person of the Godhead, is upon you. He's upon you. He's on your life. How could we ever think that our life is an accident going somewhere to happen? How could we ever think that uh, basically our lives are going to go down the tubes or or we're going to experience this hardship that's going to take us out? No, the Spirit of the Lord is upon you. And Jesus knew the Spirit of the Lord was upon him, and he was anointed with this Holy Spirit to do certain things. What was he anointed to do? To preach the gospel to the poor. What is good news to a poor person? You don't have to remain in that poverty any longer. You don't have to stay in that state any longer. Is it God's will that people remain poor? No. It's God's will that people prosper. I just quoted it to you from 3 John 2, that his desire is that you prosper and be in health. It is absolutely God's will that you prosper, that you have more than enough in your life so that you can be a blessing. I can't give shoes to kids that are in need if I'm in need of shoes myself. Now, what you need to realize is that's not a bad place to be in, but God doesn't want you to stay in there. He wants you to get to the place where you can understand that the blessing is upon your life to make you rich, and he adds no sorrow to it, and he can take you out of that place of depending on other things to provide your need and understand that he is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord God that provides for you. And the next year, you can be a blessing where you're buying shoes, and the year previously, you were receiving them. So God wants to take you out of that. How does he take you out? The anointing broke the spirit of poverty. Poverty came in the earth in the fall of man, and poverty is an absolute curse. Just take a look around the world what poverty does. Millions of children starving and hundreds and even thousands a day dying because they don't have clean water to drink or food to eat every single day. Poverty is a curse. And guess what? Jesus came to redeem us from that curse so that the blessing of Abraham would be upon us, the children of, of, of the Gentiles and the children of Israel. So this anointing is upon him to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal brokenhearted people, 
to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. So God wants you free in your mind. He doesn't want you oppressed. He wants you healthy in your body. He doesn't want you sick. He wants you not to be impoverished. He wants you to be prospering. Because guess what? When you're doing all those things and you're walking in that way, guess what? You begin to exude the kingdom of God, and all of a sudden you can focus on your God-given assignment. It's hard to minister and be focused on your assignment when you're sick, busted, broke, disgusted, depressed, it's hard enough to minister to a hurting world when we're in our right frame of mind. Imagine if you're in that condition, how effective will you be? Turn, turn, back, uh, to, turn over to Luke chapter 6. I want to give you two more scriptures, and then we're going to minister to some people today. Luke chapter 6, in verse 17 to 19. And he came down with them and stood on a level place, with a crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and from the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon who came to hear him and be healed of their diseases. So I want you to get the picture of this. People were pressing in to hear the word of God from the mouth of Jesus and to be healed. Do you think people would walk probably tens of miles to get to where Jesus was? if they did not think they were going to receive anything when he spoke? Do you think that he would get around him if they thought they would get nothing? And see, we have to understand in the church today, when we come to the house of God or when we come to the foot of the cross or when we come to Jesus, do we really expect to receive something or are we just going out of re religious exercise or just out of habit? Are we just coming to Jesus just because that's what we've been doing for 20 or 30 years? Are we just coming into, into his presence because that's something that we've been sort of habitualized, uh, been able to do? It's something that's habit-forming. Or every time when we approach Jesus, it's something that we say, I know I'm going to get touched today. I know I'm going to experience an outpouring of his spirit today. See, until the church gets hungry, your hunger level will determine how much God pours out into our lives. And see, we have to get hungry for the things of God. And I'm telling you, we're coming to that place in the American culture where things aren't satisfying people anymore. People aren't satisfied politically. They're not satisfied financially. They're not satisfied relationally. Matter of fact, they're not satisfied with church today, most people, because most people in America don't attend church. But I'm telling you, if we could have a move of the Spirit and have the anointing of God begin flowing out of our individual lives into our community, communities and our neighborhoods and our workplaces, people would begin to become hungry once again for the anointing of God that was upon Jesus, and they'll want to come and be where you are so that they can get healed. I believe we're getting ready to come into that day real soon where people are going to get hungry to come over our house and just say, you know what, can I come over the house? And, and the first thing I, I say is no because you don't want to be inconvenienced. You don't want to be bothered. But I'm telling you, we've got to get past that and say, you know what, come on over if you have a need. Come on over if you're sick. Come on over if you're oppressed today because there's an anointing that dwells inside of me that God wants to use to touch you. And I'm willing to take the time to go out of my way to be a reservoir that's going to unleash the anointing of God in your life. I believe that. I believe that we're going to hear of testimonies and miracles and incredible things. As people, as we get hungry, other people will get hungry. So they began to come to hear him and to be healed. And, and it says, and he came, and basically as well as those who were tormented with unclean spirits, and they were healed. And the whole multitude sought to touch him, for power went out from him and healed them all. My prayer today is that every one of you in this room that need a healing are going to go out of here whole. 
My prayer today is every one of you that are watching my live stream today are going to experience a healing power in your body. Virtue can go through these sound waves and air waves and heal you and deliver you from oppression and from all the attacks of the enemy today. They were thronging him and all they wanted to do was touch him because they knew that there was anointing upon his life and when you get under the anointing, you want to make a withdrawal from the anointing. Last verse, Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. You say, Pastor, well, that's Jesus, and Jesus was the miracle worker, and Jesus did all the miracles. No, we need to understand that Jesus was the prototype. Jesus was the first among many brethren, the first born-again man, the first begotten from above. Adam was the first Adam, Jesus was the last Adam, and Jesus came to show us how we're supposed to live our lives. That's why he didn't need to hang around for 120 years. That's why he checked out at 33 years old, because he had already showed us the Father and showed us how we're supposed to live, and he left the prototype or the image with 12 guys called disciples. And they were the progenitors of the church, and the church began to explode and expand. And by the time you get to Acts chapter 2, you find out that in verse 3, Saul had made a havoc of the church, entering every house and dragging off men and women, committing them to prison. There was an incredible move of the Spirit in that day, so much so that they were putting people that were preaching the name of Jesus in prison. I wonder if a lot of us could be convicted of being a Christian if we were brought before a court of law. Oh, look how quiet it's getting in here now. They were being thrown into prison. Why? Because they saw the power of God. When you see the power of God operate out of your life, you're not going to want to stop. You're not going to want to shut up. You're not going to want to turn off. You know, there's this guy on television that I, I got to change the channel every time he comes on because he's pushing his car vehicles and he can be anointing, but, but he's loud and he's forward, and I'm not going to give him a plug by saying it, but you know who I'm talking about. But you know what? He doesn't back off of what he really believes, even though he's being criticized by other car dealerships. While they're criticizing him, he's going all the way to the bank selling the most cars in the region. And see, some of us take a little criticism. We, well, we better tone it down because you know what? People are getting upset. Honey, if you haven't offended anybody lately, get, it, it doesn't take much in this 21st century culture to offend people. So get over feeling offended. They're not offended at you. They're offended at the God in you. They don't hate you. They hate the Jesus Christ that you represent. So we've got to be bolder and we've got to be louder. That's why I'm putting this loud mouth and voice on live stream and on television and radio because I can't, don't know how to be quiet. Amen. Only when I get home am I silent. Ask my wife. <laughs> Silence is golden. So they were throwing them into prison. Therefore, those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. I want you to see this, preaching the word. We need the word of God in this nation more than ever before. I believe it's coming back to this nation. I believe prayer is coming back to this nation, the word. But we've got to preach the word of God. But what kind of word do we preach? It's not just preaching generic things and topical things. We can do that, but there is a specific thing the early church was preaching that I want you to see. Because when they went everywhere preaching, Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. What does that mean that he preached Christ? It doesn't mean that he was preaching his last name. He was preaching the anointed one, and his anointing is here to break the yoke and to remove the burden off of your life. He was preaching Christ to them, telling the people that there is an anointing. He was saying things like, I can't heal you of anything. I have no power, but there is an anointing upon my life, the same anointing that was on Jesus Christ, and I'm here to preach about that anointing because it's only that anointing that can heal you, that can deliver you, that can free you from the oppressive spirits of the enemy that's coming against you. He went down and he preached Christ to them, and the multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, watch this, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. 
seeing and hearing the miracles which he did. I believe that people are going to hear and see miracles that you perform. I believe the days are coming where you're going to see miracles out of your own hands as a believer. That people you're going to lay your hands on that have tumors and cancers and uncurable diseases, all of a sudden they're going to go to the doctors and you don't have to pray some big long prayer and get loud like me. You could just lay your hand and say, I, I, I heal you in the, in the name of Jesus Christ. And as you do that, the anointing is transferred out of your life and people are going to go back to the doctors and the doctors are going to be scratching their head saying, I don't know what happened. What have you been doing? Have you been on some type of special diet or have you been doing something I don't know about? And you're going to have to say, well, there's something that happened. A friend of mine laid their hand on me and they prayed in the name of Jesus and they talked about this anointing and they said it would break this yoke and remove this burden off my life. I guess I've been healed by the power of God. I believe we're about to see an eruption of, of health in the earth like never before. If we're going to make America great again, we need to be the church and the forefront of people that are going out making it great again. Because, honey, you can't wait for a politician to make it great again. You have the anointing upon your life to make America great again in people's lives. People out there are experiencing hardships. They're going through difficult seasons in their life. They have bad times all around them. And guess what? You can come out there and say, I'm about to make your life great again. One touch of the Holy Ghost. One touch of the anointing upon your life. And everything is going to begin to change. They saw and they heard the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many who were possessed and many were, who were paralyzed and the lame were healed and there was great joy in that city. You want to experience great joy? You want to experience excitement like never before? Start unleashing the anointing that's on your life in people's lives and watch how that anointing breaks the yoke and removes the burden. Maybe you're watching me by live stream today and Maybe you have an illness in your body or maybe you have an oppression in your mind or maybe you're bound by an addiction like pornography or some type of drug. I want to release the anointing right through these airwaves right now to you that are watching. And I believe that you're going to experience a manifestation that's going to set you free. I want you to stretch your hand right towards me if you're watching by live stream just as a point of contact to agree with me right now. And all these people in this room are, are going to agree with me as I send the word of God to you to heal you and deliver you from all destruction. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we release the anointing of God, the anointed one and his anointing, right through these airwaves, Father, to deliver, to set free, and to heal. I speak to every cancer, every tumor, every blind eye and deaf ear in the name of Jesus, and I release the power of God to go forth right now to heal and deliver people. You have anointed us with the Holy Ghost and with power, and we go about right now doing good and healing all that are oppressed of the devil for God is with us in Jesus name we declare you are made whole from the top of your head to the soles of your feet sickness has to go diseases have to leave tumors have to go right now in Jesus name amen and amen. I want you to check yourself out, those of you that are watching. See if you can do something that you couldn't do before. Go to the doctor and let him recheck you and see what God did. I believe that a miracle has taken place in your body. And if you experience that, go to our website, thefaithcenter.com, and click on the information page and send me a little email and let me know that you were healed by the power of God during this July 2nd service. Tune in again next week.